This is the video for SOL 8.6 on angles. You'll need one pencil to complete these notes. The space, usually measured in degrees, between two intersecting or touching lines. So line uh, BA and BC, we've got the space in between those two lines, and that is my angle. And I could also name this angle angle A, B, C including the two lines that it's made of and the point in between. So that point where those two sides intersect, meet, or touch is called the vertex. And the two lines that make up the angle, in this case BA and BC, are called the two sides of the angle. An angle that measures 90 degrees, as in the corner of a square, or an angle created by two intersecting perpendicular lines. So two lines that are called perpendicular will make a 90 degree angle, or what's called a right angle. An angle that measures 180 degrees or is made of a straight line. So a straight line has a measurement of 180 degrees, and this is also considered a straight angle. Two angles that have the same measurement are considered to be congruent. Mm -hmm. So the symbol here means that they're congruent, and it doesn't matter if they're the same size, this angle's measure is 155 degrees, and this angle's measure is 155 degrees. Therefore, angle R and angle Q are congruent, or they have the same measurement. Two angles that share a common vertex and a common side, but don't overlap. So angle AOB is adjacent to angle BOC because they share the side BO and they also share the vertex O and that's what makes these two angles adjacent angles. Angles that are made by two intersecting lines and are opposites of each other, or non-adjacent. They're not next to each other. All they do is share a vertex. So FEI is congruent, or has the same measurement as GEH, and they're on opposite sides of those two lines, and they are congruent. We also see FEG and is congruent to angle IEH, and they have the same measurements. So if there are two intersecting lines and they're made, these two angles are made of the same two lines, but on the opposite sides, these are vertical angles, and those vertical angles will always end up being congruent. A relationship between two angles whose measurements add up to 90 degrees or can be combined to make a right angle. So angle A and angle B can be combined to make this right angle. So angle A plus B gives me 90 degrees, then I know that these two angles are complementary angles. A relationship between two angles whose measurements add up to 180 degrees or can be combined to make a straight angle. So A and B combined will make 180 degrees. So these two angles, A and B, make up a straight 
line or straight angle. So together they are supplementary angles. The reflex angle is the bigger of the two angles, greater than 180 degrees. The reflex angle can be added to the normal angle, obtuse, acute, or right, to a sum of 360 degrees. So if I have a, an acute angle that's 49 degrees, then the reflex angle would be the distance around that angle, and the ref, reflex angle plus this acute angle would give me 360 degrees. So the reflex angle is the measurement in degrees around the outside of the angle. So I'm going to place my protractor on angle 1 and go from 0 all the way to 45 to measure angle 1 as 45 degrees. And for angle 2, I'm going to count all the way from 0 to 135 degrees. So angle 2 is 135 degrees. And if I continue trying to measure, angle 3 ends up being 45 degrees if I line that up correctly. And then angle 4, I can count from 0 on the other direction to see that I have 135 degrees. Angle 1 is 45 degrees and 2 is 135 degrees. And together they make a straight line and add up to be 180 degrees. Therefore, angles 1 and 2 are supplementary angles. Now, if we look across from angle 1, we get angle 3. And we see that angle 1 and 3 are vertical angles, and they have the same measurement. 2 and 4 are congruent to each other as well, and they're on opposite sides, so they are vertical angles. Two Angle 2 and 3 make a straight line, 3 and 4 make a straight line, and 4 and 1 make a straight line. So each of these are supplementary angles. We're going to line it up for angle number 5 and count from 0 all the way to 80 for angle number 5, which is 80 degrees. Line that up again and count from 0 all the way to 100 for angle 6, which is 100 degrees, and spin that around. Count from 0 all the way to 80 for angle 7, and place that back and count from 0 to 80, to 100 I mean, for now angle number 5 we measured as being 80 degrees, and angle 6 is 100 degrees, so 80 plus 100 makes 180, so 5 and 6 are supplementary. The 5 and 7 are on opposite sides, and we see they are congruent, so angles 5 and 7 are, vo are vertical angles. Uh, angle 6 and 7 add up to be 180, or a straight line, so 6 and 7 are supplementary and 6 and 8 are congruent and on opposite sides, so 6 and 8 are vertical angles. 7 and 8, so the 80 degrees plus 100 degrees gives me 180, so 7 and 8 and 5 and 8 are both different pairs of supplementary angles. Angle 1 is already measured as 90 degrees and to measure angle 2 um, angle 3, we have 40 degrees, and if we turn that, angle 2 is about 50 degrees. So recording that angle 3 was 40 degrees, and angle 2 was 50 degrees. Now to measure angle number 5, or angle number 4, we would get 50 degrees and turn, so we'd get 50 degrees for angle number 4 and if we turned that to the side, we can measure angle number 5 as being 10, 20, 30, 40 
degrees. So angle 5 is also 40 degrees. Angle 6 we don't even have to measure because 1 and 6 are supplementary and if uh, I have one of those two angles is 9 degrees and the other one ends up being 90 degrees as well. So I didn't have to measure it but you could definitely measure that as being 90 degrees or another right angle. So angle 1 is 90 degrees and angle 6 is 90 degrees. So angles 1 and 6 are your two right angles in this situation. And that means that 2 and 3 must make a right angle so they are complementary and 50 degrees plus 40 degrees gives me 90 degrees so that confirms it and angle 4 which is 50 degrees and angle 5 which is 40 degrees together 50 plus 40 is 90 so angles 4 and 5 are complementary because they add up to 90 degrees and technically 3 and 4 40 plus 50 or angle 2 and 5 50 plus 40 would give me 90 so they're not adjacent angles but they are still complementary because they add up to 90 degrees now 1 and 2 are adjacent, 2 and 3 are adjacent, 3 and 4 share a common side, 4 and 5 also share a common side, 5 and 6 share a common side and are also adjacent, and then 6 and 1 share a common side and vertex, so they are adjacent. First thing I'm looking for is vertical angles, and I see that angle 1 and angle 3 both share the same uh, lines but are on opposite sides and only share a vertex. Uh, an angle that is adjacent to 4, we could look on the left side or we could look on the right side and we see that angle 3 is adjacent to angle 4. Now what's supplementary to angle 3? Well if I look at this entire straight angle Three, angle 3 and angle 2 make up that straight angle so they are supplementary and angle 4 and 3 together make a right angle so angle 3 and 4 are complementary. Now if we line that protractor up and count from 0 we get all the way from 0 to 60 degrees so the measurement of that angle is 60 degrees. And if you are smaller than a 90 degree right angle, so 60 is smaller than 90 degrees, then you are an acute angle, so acute little angle. And the reflex angle, so we have this angle is 60 degrees, and all the way around would be 360 degrees, so the reflex angle or the bigger angle around is going to be what's left over after we take that 60 degrees away. So we're taking the 60 degrees away and we get 300 degrees as being that reflex angle. So that bigger angle is always going to be our reflex angle. If we line this up and go from 0 all the way to 120, we have that this angle from here to here measures at 120 degrees. So we have our angle measurement and if we have a 90 degree angle, 120 is bigger than that, so this is going to be an obtuse angle. And the reflex angle is going to be the bigger angle that goes the rest of the 360 degrees all the way around. So 360 degrees take away the 120 degrees that we've already measured is going to give us 240 degrees for our reflex angle. So this one up here was 300 degrees and this one in the center is 240 degrees. And a circle will always add up to 360 degrees. Now I don't even need to measure this angle because we see a little square in the corner of that angle and that square means that it's a right angle because every right uh, angle
90 degrees. Now, if we wanted to know the reflex angle or the bigger angle that goes the rest of the way around, we take away the 90 and we would end up getting 270 degrees. So that bigger reflex angle is 270 degrees. So you can count from zero all the way to 140. So we know this angle measures from here to here is 140 degrees. So looking at that, we know that 140 degrees is actually greater than 90 degrees, so this is an obtuse angle. If we want the reflex angle or the rest of the way around the circle, we're going to take the 360 degrees and the 140 degrees that we've already measured, and we see that the reflex angle is 220 degrees. For this next, we count from zero all the way to about 75. So the measure from here to here, that angle is 75 degrees. And we know that 75 degrees is smaller than 90 degrees, so this type of angle is acute. Now if we want the reflex or the bigger angle that goes the rest of the way around the circle, we're going to take the 75 degrees that we've already measured away from the 360 degrees of that circle, and we end up getting 285 degrees for our reflex angle. What is the measurement of angle X? Well, we know that there's 360 degrees in a circle, and we have 260 degrees taken away from that already, so we have that angle X would be 100 degrees. In number two, we have the reflex angle again, so 360 degrees to take away the 210 degrees would give us 150 degrees for that missing angle. What is the measurement of angle X? Well, here we don't have the full circle. We only have half the circle or a straight line. Now, the straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if I have 180 degrees and I take away the 42 of it that's measured already, I will end up getting 138 degrees. So that missing angle is 138. Now, we know this because they're supplementary. Now, angle 1 and angle uh, and the angle that's measured 113 degrees are vertical angles, so we know they are congruent or the same measure. And angle 3 is supplementary with that 113 degree angle, so we're going to take 113 away from the 180 and see that angle 3 is equal to 67 degrees. Then 2 and 3 are opposite of each other, sharing that vertex, and we see that they would be congruent because they're vertical angles. We need to find the unknown angles. First off, we see that angle 1 and this 40 degree angle make a right angle. So they're complementary. And if I take 90 degrees and take away the 40 degrees, then the 50 degrees that are left over is equal to that angle number 1. We can also see that these three angles together would make 180 degrees. So those three angles together would be supplementary. So the 40 degrees plus the 25 degrees plus angle 2 should all add up to that straight angle, which would be 180 degrees. So 40 plus 25, those two adjacent angles, would equal 60 degrees when put together. And if I take 65 degrees away from the 180 degrees, then angle 2 is the angle that we have left over, and that would end up giving us 
115 degrees for angle number two. And that makes sense because it looks like it's a, uh, an obtuse angle. Now angle three is vertical angles with this one that equals 40 degrees. So I see that angle three would have a measurement of 40 degrees because these are the two angles that are vertical from each other. They share a vertex and the two lines go straight through. So you have 115 here and we have 40 over here. And moving on to number six, we want to find the measurements of MOQ and NOP. Well, I know whatever those measurements are that they are vertical angles. They're opposite of each other. So I know that they're equal. So it says MOQ is equal to X plus two, whatever that X is, we're going to add two to it. And NOP is equal to three X minus 54. So we're going to take x away from both sides, cancels it on the left, and 2 equals 3x minus x is 2x, and then we're going to add 54 to both sides to get x alone, cancels out on the right, and 2x stays on the right, and we get 56. So we're going to divide by 2, and 1, and 1 times x is just x, and 56 divided by 2 is 28. So 28 is actually equal to x. Now that's not what my angles are equal to, that's what x is equal to. Angle MOQ is equal to x plus 2. So that would be 28 plus 2, which gives me 30 degrees. And angle NOP so we see that angle MOQ is equal to 30 degrees, and the vertical angle over here, if we put X in there, we would have gotten 30 degrees as well. So the measurement of angle MOQ is 30 degrees. Now here it asks for QOP. So QOP is this obtuse angle that is supplementary to that 30 degree angle. So if we take 180 degrees for that straight angle and subtract the 30 degrees from angle MOQ, we'll end up getting 150 degrees for angle QOP. And that's 150 degrees uh, for that last angle. Now make sure you copy this because Ms. Szymanski made a mistake earlier and this is going to disappear. What is the measurement of the missing angle? So angle AOB is 36 degrees, angle AOC, AOC, the whole angle is 133 degrees, and it wants to know what this angle BOC is. So 133 degrees is made up with those two smaller angles. So if I take 36 degrees away from that 133 degree angle, then I'll get what my missing angle is and we see that it is 97 degrees, and that makes sense because it looks like it's a little bit bigger than a 90 degree angle. Now we see that angle A plus angle B will equal angle C because those two adjacent angles, A and B, would equal the bigger angle that they make together. So angle A is 8x minus 5, plus angle B, which is 7x minus 9, that will equal 14x minus 9. So on the left side, let's combine the like terms. If I have 8x's and then I have 7x's, altogether I have 15x's. If I take away 5 and then I take away 9, altogether I would have taken away 14. So the left side is simplified, and 15x minus 14 is equal to 14x minus 9. Now I want to get the x's to one side, so and the constants to the other. So I'm going to add 14 to both sides, and on the left I have 15x. So I don't have any, I only have x's on the left. And negative 9 plus 14 is equal to positive 5. But I need to get the x's that are on the right over to the left. So I'm going to subtract 14x from both sides 
and I get 15x minus 14x is 1x, and I see that x is equal to 5. But that's not what any of the angles are equal to. Those don't look like 5 degrees. But angle A is 8x minus 5, so I'm going to put that 5 back into that expression using my order of operations, and I see that A is equal to 35. So the measurement of A is equal to 35. And now I need to find the measurement for angle B. So I know that 7 times x, which is 5, minus 9, would give me uh, the measurement for angle B. So I do the order of operations, and 35 minus 9 is equal to 26. So the measurement of angle B is 26. Now I see that angle A plus angle B is going to give me angle C, so I could put the 5 in to 14x minus 9 and figure out what angle C is, or I could just add angle A and B together to see that I have 61 degrees.